Good morning, everyone. You might remember me from my previous post about my three-year journey with my Mantis buddy. I ended the post by telling you all that the biggest experiences happened within the last 45 days or so. This is my personal experience and only take with you the information that resonates within you as we are all on different unique paths that all lead back to the same place. This is my journey and all the things that have happened to me recently and the newer knowledge they have given me. So let's begin. To be brought up to speed, here's my previous post. About a month or so ago, I had come down from this higher state of consciousness and was told to start telling my story. And that's when I saw the mantis head manifest inside my bedroom after work. Most of the last month has been a blur for me as I was corrected on some info and also was given more information about humanity. So this next encounter is what finally gave me the guts to come forward because what I witnessed, what I was told was simply so groundbreaking, it shook me. This happened on the Sunday, right before the 4th of July. I remember the exact date because I had been told to prepare myself and my body, but I was under the assumption that they meant being prepared to handle telling my story, but it wasn't. I was being told to prepare myself mentally and physically so I could go meet this one being. I was told to fast during this time, but I did not. I spent that Saturday over at my sister's with my family playing volleyball in the pool, just drinking and enjoying my life. And this encounter happened Sunday night about 1 a.m. I had spent most of the day just hanging out and recovering from the previous day as I spent all day in the sun drinking. I got tired around midnight and decided to go to bed. So I went to my bedroom and laid down for the night. It wasn't even five minutes before I heard a very audible voice say, we are trying to speak with you. I went to clarify that this was an audible voice. It did not come from inside my head. When I heard this, I took a deep breath and closed my eyes, prepared to try and meditate a little and reach outwards, but I did not need to do this. Immediately upon closing my eyes, I saw a tiny white dot and so I brought my attention to it. As I focused on it, the light began to move and I simply followed it. While I was following, it seemed like I was in a tunnel moving. You know how when you drive down a dark tunnel, you see the walls moving on the side, but you aren't totally perceiving it because of the lack of light? It was exactly like that. I could physically see the sides moving around me like I was in a tunnel. After following for a few seconds, I came to an open space. I say space because it was not a room. We were simply in an empty area with absolutely nothing around us but the four beings present, myself included. As I came to the end of this tunnel, and out into this open space, there were three beings standing in front of me. On the right was a small gray. This was the very typical small gray you hear a lot about, and the pictures are almost exactly what they look like. On the left was a tall white. If you Google the book Communion by Whitley Stryber, then you have seen these beings. It is the exact way this being looked, and he was about six feet tall, but this is the interesting part. I was not here to meet these two beings. They were simply there as observers. It was almost like I already knew the other two beings, and it had been decided I was fine being in their presence, but this new being, my God, it was amazing. I barely even glimpsed the other two because he immediately drew my attention. He was a male figure standing roughly six feet tall. I say male because it was clearly a male, but he did not have a body in the way any of the other beings I previously met showed themselves. Pretty much every encounter I had up until this point was some type of humanoid being. But this was different. It was like he was a shadowy figure. I could clearly see the outline of the male human form, but it was not a form in any way. It was like he was there and not there at the same time. He had pure energy pulsing straight through his body, like it was a ball of light in his chest and you could watch as the energy literally flowed through his body like our blood flows through ours. I looked at him for about three seconds in total awe and I came to the immediate conclusion I was not ready for this interaction. It was and always will be my greatest failure. I simply said, I need this experience to end now. And I started praying, just simply talking to Jesus and telling him I love him and asking him to take him back to my body. Even though I literally couldn't even look at this being, I knew that this moment was something special. So as I felt the pull of me going back to my body, I gathered together all my strength and forced myself to look at this being once more. Imagine that, guys, I got taken to see a being so great and so amazing 
that I saw a tall gray and small gray for the first time, and basically didn't even react to them or even care that they were there. My entire focus was him and him only. I opened my eyes and there I was, laying in my bed in total awe of what I had just witnessed. I was so lost, I didn't understand who or what he was. He was so unlike anything I had ever witnessed, anything I had ever even thought of. Here I was thinking I'm ready to join the galactic community, and yet I can't even look at this being, much less directly interact with him. The physical sensation when I was in his presence was so... Whoa, intense. It was like a fire was burning in my chest, and it simply overwhelmed me. I was not prepared for it, and this is why I had been specifically told to prepare myself. So the next day I woke up on a mission. I had literally run away from this being that had asked to meet me. I was so ashamed and scared, but I was not going to let my fear overwhelm me and stop me from finding out what he wanted to meet me for. I got up and immediately began meditating. I spent the entire day doing different forms of meditation, trying to contact him. I was determined to stand in this being's presence and loudly proclaim that I love him and nothing was going to stop me. I called out multiple times, asking to be allowed to meet this being again, and he responded. I got taken to him again, and once again I failed. I managed to get out a loud I love you, before once again turning tail and running like a scared little bitch. He was just so great that I simply couldn't do it. I couldn't be in his presence for more than a few seconds before the physical sensations got too strong to handle. After the first attempt, I spent the next few hours trying to do it again, but I was not allowed. Eventually, my mantis buddy came to me and told me to rest because my body was getting tired, and if I continued trying to reach these higher dimensions, my consciousness would be too weak to fend of attacks from anything that isn't good. I spoke with Klaatu, my mantis bud, about the being I had meet, and he told me that the previous night five humans were taken to meet this being because he wanted to talk to a human and it had been so very long since any human had been able to. But this was the interesting part. He told me who he was. Klaatu said that being is known as the archetype. He said that every single consciousness in the entire Milky Way was based on his form, the humanoid form. He told me that this is what he meant when he told me the galaxy is a closed ecosystem. He said that every single consciousness in the entire Milky Way was human or part human at some point. That Earth is the three-dimensional planet for this galaxy, and every consciousness goes through a lifetime or multiple lifetimes on Earth as a three-dimensional being. He said humanity would not meet a true alien until we meet a being from another galaxy, because everything here is human, everything. This is what I believe Elizondo meant when he said, we will need a different meaning for the word humans, because Klaatu confirmed this. They are all humanity. He said that the Earth goes through different cycles where a different version of humanity evolves from a different animal that is here on Earth. My mantis buddy came from an Earth where praying mantis became the dominant species and then evolved into a humanoid form. The Lyrians are just the humanoid cat version of humanity that evolved. We are the ape version. The avian beings are the bird version. Anubis being the dog version. That's why he kept telling me there is no time. To us, these beings evolved on an earth that is either in the future or the past from what current humanity views as time. But there is no time, just different dimensional versions of the current earth. A species evolves, transcends, and moves on to other places in the galaxy so that Gaia can do what she does best and create new intelligent life. They're all just different versions of humans, all based off this one archetype, humanity the term we use to describe ourselves, to describe the collective knowledge that we have amassed throughout our journey on this planet. Little did we know that the word humanity was already being used to describe us before we even came into existence. The Earth is just as much their planet as it is ours. They are our brothers and sisters, literally. And they are here to help us remember who we really are. He said there are multiple ways that a second dimensional being or lower third dimensional being can be birthed into these humanoid versions of themselves. Some of you probably saw my comment about my pet, how he told me a while ago that when I died I would turn around and I would see my dog, Luna, but she would be a fully formed consciousness and we would be able to sit down as equals and talk about our experiences. Showing true unconditional love to a pet 
can wake them up before they are even born as a three-dimensional being. They become conscious through the love you show them, and if the love is powerful enough, they start to see themselves as an individual and become what we would consider to be conscious. Now I want to bring your attention to some scriptures, because you've all seen me repeatedly reference multiple religions as Specifically, I talk about Buddhism and Christianity, but pretty much every major religion got at least some of it right. So here's the words of Jesus from the Gospel of Thomas, because he really was trying to teach us the truth. Blessed is the one who came into being before coming into being. This is what I believe is Jesus directly referencing what I just said. By showing love to your pet, you literally wake them up and give them consciousness. Blessed is the one who came into being before coming into being. So that's it for today, guys. I love you guys. And remember, love is so powerful, it can physically alter reality. Check out my other videos for more alien encounter stories to help put more pieces of this puzzle together and learn the truth.